Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The division names in the NFL are pretty self-explanatory. Today, in each conference, you have the East, the North, the South, and the West. Yes, there are a few oddities in there, like the Indianapolis Colts being in a Southern Division, the Dallas Cowboys being in an Eastern Division, and at one point, the Atlanta Falcons and Carolina Panthers being in the NFC West, while the Arizona Cardinals occupy the NFC East. But for the most part, what you see is what you get. It's not rocket science. The Eastern teams are in the East, the Western teams are in the West, and so on and so forth. But when the NFL first created divisions back in the 1960s, the names were, well, they were really bizarre. You had the Central Division, the Coastal Division, the Capital Division, and the Century Division. And as crazy and as ridiculous as those names might sound, what you probably don't know is that with the Century Division, that was not even the original name. In fact, the owners spent 12 hours trying to come up with a name for the division, settled on a completely different name, and then changed it a few weeks later. This is the crazy story behind the Federal Division, otherwise known as the division that never existed. Before I talk about the naming of these divisions, we first need context as to why new names were needed in the first place. Ever since the 1933 season, the NFL was cleanly split into two divisions or conferences. You had the Eastern Division and Western Division from 1933 to 1949. You had the American Conference and the National Conference from 1950 to 1952. And you had the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference from 1953 to 1966. It worked just like Major League Baseball did. The winner of each conference would play in the championship. However, an upstart league known as the American Football League would change everything. Aside from the well-documented things and innovations that we got in the NFL because of the AFL, one of the things that it forced the NFL to do was expand. Part of the reason why the AFL was created in the first place was because people wanted to own football teams, but the NFL wasn't letting them in. Unlike other upstart leagues, the AFL was no joke. They had money, they had a television contract, they had players and were able to successfully lure players away from the NFL, even first round picks like Joe Namath. The NFL knew that if they didn't expand, that the AFL would swoop in, take over those markets, and possibly overtake the NFL. With that in mind, in the mid-1960s, the NFL announced two brand new expansion teams to be put in the southern part of the United States. One of those teams was the Atlanta Falcons, who entered the league in 1966 as a direct response to the AFL looking at putting a team in that city. The other team was the New Orleans Saints, who would enter the league in 1967. Unlike Atlanta, the NFL didn't have to rush and worry about the AFL putting a team in New Orleans, since the league wasn't looking at putting a team there, and there was no way the AFL was going to place a team there after the awful events that took place at the 1965 AFL All-Star Game. While the NFL played with 15 teams in 1966 and kept the two-conference format, in 1967, they were going to have 16 teams. And with 16 teams, it was time to expand to four divisions. From a competition standpoint, it made the most sense, as in a 14-game season with two conferences of eight teams instead of four divisions of four teams each, you would just wind up playing the same teams twice and never playing the other conference. Plus, I'm sure the benefits of having some extra playoff games was a nice added bonus. Now that the decision was made, it was time to split the teams up and name the divisions accordingly. That's where things get truly bizarre. Coming up with the first three division names didn't seem to be a problem. The first division consisted of Green Bay, Minnesota, Detroit, and Chicago. All four of those teams are geographically close to each other, and all four of these teams play near the central part of the United States. They decided to call themselves the Central Division. Easy enough. The second division consisted of Washington, Philadelphia, Dallas, and New Orleans. Washington advocated for the Capital Division, since they played in the nation's capital, and since Philadelphia was once the nation's capital. Plus, as a compromise, the Giants and Saints were going to swap divisions in 1968, since both of the divisions in the Eastern Conference won in New York in their division for obvious market reasons. And New York was also once the nation's capital. Dallas went along with the plan, and the Capital Division was created. Easy enough. The third division consisted of Atlanta, Baltimore, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. No, I'm not making that up. That division was all over the place geographically. However, all those cities were either coastal cities, or in the case of Atlanta, in states that border the coast. Maryland and Georgia are along the Atlantic coast, and California is on the Pacific coast. With that, they decided to call their division the Coastal Division. Easy enough. Three divisions down, one to go. And this final one consisted of New York, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis. What the heck do you call this division? 
the teams in the league deliberated hard on the names, and the meeting on what to call this division took, I kid you not, 12 hours. And this wasn't 12 hours with breaks in between. The two sides didn't even break for dinner. In that continuous straight through 12 hour period, the league was struggling to just come up with a name to call this division. And many, many names were thrown out. The only problem? In those 12 hours, a grand total of none of them wound up sticking. One suggestion was the Colombian division. There are a few problems with the name Colombian division. If it was named after the Columbia River, that was located in the Pacific Northwest, nowhere near where any of these four teams played. If it was named after Christopher Columbus, oh boy does that pose some problems that I'm not going to get into in this video. And if it was named after just the patriotic name Columbia, it would be weird to have a division named the Columbia Division and not have Washington in it. So that name was tossed. Another name was the Liberty Division. This seemed to be the winner. Everyone seemed to like the name, it fit with a the theme of patriotism in the Eastern Conference with the Capital Division, and with New York in the division and the obvious ties to the Statue of Liberty, this name seemed to work. That is, until one owner pointed out a very obvious flaw. How can you have a division called the Liberty Division and not have Philadelphia in it? Philadelphia is the home of the Liberty Bell, and not having Philly in the division would be somewhat confusing. And it would be even more confusing in 1968 when the Giants and Saints swapped places and you didn't have the markets with the Liberty Bell or the Statue of Liberty in the Liberty Division. Once one owner pointed that out, that name was completely thrown out the door. The other suggestion that was thrown out was the Central Division. The only problem with that, aside from the fact that there is nothing central about New York, oh yeah, there is already a Central Division. You can't have two Central Divisions. Two divisions with the exact same name would make no sense whatsoever. Imagine if you knew nothing about football, a read in the newspaper that the 8-2 Bears, sitting at first place in the Central, were taking on the 6-4 Browns, sitting at first place in the Central. You would think that the writer was drunk or didn't know how math worked. For very obvious reasons, that name was thrown out. The sides were going nowhere. They couldn't come up with a name for the division. As Dan Rooney of the Pittsburgh Steelers said, we were the last ones to get a name. Commissioner Roselle would sit down and try to arbitrate, and we give him the same arguments we'd be giving each other. Finally, someone suggested the Federal Division. Why Federal? Part of it was because the other division in the Eastern Conference was the Capital Division, so you have that American theme going and being pretty consistent. It also ended in an L, just like every other division, so you have that rhyme scheme going. But the main reason was that the owners were tired and hangry. They just wanted that meeting to be done. After 12 hours, any name that sounded remotely good was going to be the winner. With that, the four divisions were created. You have the Capital, the Central, the Coastal, and the Federal. However, there's a reason you probably didn't know about the Federal Division until this video. Because the Federal Division never existed. Two months later, as it turns out, those meetings were all for nothing. Because the name would change again. Two months later, when the NFL met for winter meetings in February 1967 down in Honolulu, the issue of the divisions was brought up again. No one was thinking clearly after that 12-hour session, and they realized the obvious problem with the Federal Division. If the other three divisions started with the letter C, then why doesn't the Federal Division? It didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And with clear heads and some time to think it over, the owners realized that, considering the circumstances, the Federal Division flat-out stunk for an name. Aside from the obvious consistency issue compared to the other three divisions, there may have been a belief that the Federal Division would have created unnecessary confusion amongst fans and that the Federal Division was an entirely separate league unaffiliated with the NFL. Think about it. In baseball during the 1910s, you had the American League, the National League, and the Federal League. The AL and NL champions would compete for the World Series, but the Federal League was all on its own. Now you have the American Football League and the National Football League, with the champions competing for the Super Bowl. And you had a division within it called the Federal Division, with one of these teams in the division in 1968 being a team that never existed before. It wouldn't shock me if some owners thought that having a federal division, since every other NFL division started with the letter C, would lead some fans to think that the teams playing in this division weren't NFL teams. And with that name scrapped for good, they came up with a new name, known as the Century Division. There is some speculation that the name was created because football was turning a century old, as the first college football game was held in 1869 between Rutgers and Princeton. However, with that issue finally out of the way, after months and long hours of deliberating and arguing, the four divisions were settled on, and all four had names starting with the letter C. 
the NFL would stick with these sport division names until the merger with the AFL in 1970, where the league would go with the East-Central-West split that we saw until realignment and expansion in 2002. Today, the division names of the late 1960s remain a bizarre relic in NFL history, and I doubt the league is ever going back to those division names again, and for good reason. But it's amazing to think about how a merger between the NFL and AFL got done in pretty quick fashion when it took the same NFL owners more than two months to do the simple task of just coming up with a name. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes, link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaragator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated, so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.